For some people, the thrill of a sport involves pushing yourself to the limit. On February 13th, 1994, a group of friends with a wide range of mountain biking experience were spending their Sunday afternoon riding together in a rugged and remote area near Blackwell, Texas. The ranch is 4,600 acres of rolling terrain, buttes, washes. Every time it rains, it changes. Sometimes it's hard packed, a lot of times it's washed and rolling rocks, which makes it very difficult. It's basically a balancing act on the, on the terrain, and you uh, kind of have to let your bike float underneath you. You really have to keep aware and look out in front of you to know what's coming up. Don Eichels rode in the center of the pack. The four experienced mountain bikers, other than myself, rode ahead of us, and I more or less wanted to hang back with the three less experienced guys because if you're going into an isolated area and one that's very technical, you don't want to be riding by yourself. Nancy Harvey was concerned that her husband, Stan Kent, had gone on this ride. The group Stan was biking with were people who had been doing this type of biking for years, and he had done it for two months. He was taking risks that would be dangerous to someone who really hasn't been doing it for a long time. Stan's friend, Richard Brown, was also a less experienced mountain biker. And Stan was in front of me that day, so I stayed back. I know my limitations. At times, I have a tendency to, to fall. And I wouldn't want to fall in front of someone and cause him to fall. Drop. Gary Fraser was one of the most experienced riders in the group. The top is rocky and rough, and it kind of levels out and fools you because you pick up a little bit of speed, and then it drops off. Towards the bottom of it, it gets more washed out. So if you've gone with too much speed into the bottom of the hill, you have a lot of difficulty slowing down for the turn. Think you can make it? Yeah. Okay. Just be careful. It was uh, a real uneasy feeling for me because Stan and I were pretty close friends and uh, we kind of watch out for each other when we're biking. We kept talking to Stan and asking if he was okay and he kept coming back to us saying that no, I'm not okay, I'm in a lot of pain. Are your legs okay? You, you got we realized that we need to get more help in there than what we had. You two guys go on out and get some help. You guys stay together, though, okay? I'm a uh, scout master for a Boy Scout troop, and that's basically where a lot of my first aid experience and uh, training comes from. When a, there's a serious injury, you don't wait for the symptoms of shock. You, know, you automatically go ahead and, and treat for shock. Stan, we want you to keep your body as still as possible. Just let them move you, okay? If he had sustained a back or neck injury, the only thing you can do is make it worse if you, you know, jarred him or made any sudden movements with him. Let's try to brace his neck a little bit. Let's see if the good idea. Our bats. We were going to make it impossible for him to purposely move his head. And what we decided to do is to cushion the sides of his head and then push boulders 
so that it would at least stabilize him till we got uh, experienced rescue personnel there. Within 10 minutes, the two mountain bikers got back to the head of the trail, where they happened to find an off-duty EMT. Uh, well, we got a guy that's hurt real bad back in there on Telegraph Hill. While the other four bicyclists searched for a road that could be used to bring in a rescue vehicle, Gary stayed with Stan. I never met this guy before, and I was making conversation, just trying to keep his mind off of where he was at. Uh, Originally, I'm from New York. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What brings you to Once in a while, he would wince, and he'd complain about a sharp pain, and I felt uh, helpless, I, that I couldn't do any more for him. When EMT Junior Kinnick got to the scene, he quickly assessed Stan's condition. He told me that his neck hurt and his back hurt, and uh, I realized there was a real good chance that he had spinal injury. He was in severe danger because if he sneezed or anything, he could have paralyzed himself. Gary and Junior returned to the trailhead in search of first aid equipment. We were trying to find something we could use for a backbone. Yeah, that'll work. This is a good old work. It was ideal, so we got some screwdrivers and pretty much yanked it out of the wall. One, two, two three. Uh, easy. They all seem to be knowledgeable in some first aid.